Well, good day, fellow amateurs. Here we are, another antenna that's just arrived. So let's have a look at what is in the box. Well, nothing's in the box because it didn't come in a box, but that's okay. It's still worth showing. Here is a brand new antenna, dual band antenna. So it is the RAUV712 antenna. Where these names come from, I'll never know, but that's what it is. Let's have a look at what's in the pack, shall we? So what's in the pack? Well, we've got an antenna here, which is apparently two and a half dB gain. It's 50 centimeters long or 19.7 inches long. Uh, maximum power of 50 watts is what they tell me. Uh, comes with a magnetic base and uh, that's 91 millimeters wide or three and a half, just over three and a half inches wide. And it comes with four and a half meters of cable with uh, RG58 cable with a PL259 on the end. Also comes with a gift wrapped Allen key. All right, so let's see if we can put this together. Should be pretty easy. And screw that in and there we go. You obviously want to make sure that's in tightly. Allen key's there, should that ever get loose. So we'll put that away somewhere and probably lose it when we need it. Yeah, benefits of a magnetic base is that uh, you don't need to put holes in your car it can go right in the center of your roof so one of the things that uh, i often wondered about is the magnetic base is it actually contact is it actually contact to the to the car and if you put an ohm meter on the antenna and the car and even if you scraped the paint off your car you'd see that it was an open circuit there's there's heaps of resistance there so it's not actually connected to the car electronically. But is it radio waves wise? Well, it is because it's like a capacitor. So you've got the magnetic mount on your car. Let's just say this is the car. And it's like a capacitor between the car and the magnetic base. Now radio waves can go through a capacitor as we know, which means that it is connected to the car as a ground plane via the magnetic base. So the best way, the best place to put it is in the center of the car and that way you get reflection, ground plane reflection in all directions. Um, but you might want to put it on the bonnet of the car, which means you'll probably have more reflection towards the rear of the car, or you can put it on the boot of the car, which means you'll have more reflection to the front of the car. But obviously on the top is best. The bigger the magnetic base, the bigger the capacitor, which means the better connection to the car but also means the sturdier, so the bigger antenna you can hold on. If we've got a little uh, magnetic base, then big winds will push the antenna over. And I've had that with little antennas that are about this size, and the magnetic connection is only about the size of this ring here, not the actual magnetic base on this antenna. And they just fall over when you hit uh, decent speeds or certainly decent winds. So we'll put this to the test and see how fast I can go with it and does it hang on and how well does it do. So here I am outside and the first thing you should do when you put the antenna on the car is make sure it's clean. Um, mine isn't, but we'll work on that. Then put it on the car. Wow, that gripped on really well. So let's just do the push test. I don't think that's gonna go anytime soon i've really got to push on that to get it to go off let's see oh yeah now that's not going anywhere look at that i've really got to push all on that to make it come off so that's not going anywhere at high speed i would suggest so like i said before the best place is in the center of the roof um, but you might want to put it on the side so you don't have as much wind resistance with the cord up to you so this Antenna is optimally made for between 136 megahertz and 174 megahertz and also 400 and 520 megahertz So that's quite a bit bigger than the amateur radio bands. This would make an ideal scanner antenna as well just for receiving Something to think about as I said before it takes 50 watts So as I said before, this is the RA712 antenna However, you can also get the RAUV713 antenna. What's the difference? Well, the 713 is black, whereas the 712 is silver. The 712 
has the PL259 plug, whereas the 713 has a female SMA plug. So it depends what radio you're going to plug it into. This is my last magnetic antenna mount that I've had on the car. I've had it here for five years, taking it all around Australia, right up the top of Australia, right down to the bottom in the sea, or not in the sea, but by the sea. And you can see it's rusted a little bit, uh, um, but uh, works quite well. It's uh, not a Radio Diddy one, but uh, I've got a feeling the Radio Diddy one will actually last a bit better than this. You can see this one has rusted. And this one here is one of my other 2 and 70 centimeter antennas that I've used with a very small magnetic base at the bottom. So that capacitor thing I was talking about earlier, yeah, not great. But you can see it's also rusted and it falls over all the time. The wind resistance on this, because it's still quite a tall antenna, it's pretty well just as big as the Radio Diddy antenna. Um, this little magnet here just doesn't last. You can see it's cracked because it's fallen over a few times just in the wind. But both those antennas weren't Radio Diddy antennas. This is a Radio Diddy antenna here, which I think is going to last quite a bit better. So this can be loose here a little bit, but it's got a rubber seal here. So the tighter you put that up, the better. That's probably the only area where it might come unstuck. But if you tighten that up, I think you'll be fine. And as I mentioned before, there are two grub screws here. Just make sure they're nice and tight too. If you undo those grub screws, you can probably adjust it just to get the SWR down, but we'll measure that shortly. So here's my Nano V&A, and if you haven't seen the video on how a Nano V&A works, I'd suggest you look at my other video. Um, but if you have a look here, I've got a frequency range on the two meter band. And as I go across to the left, you can see about there, it, the SWR is 1.29 and climbs up to two there, right at the edge of the band. But as you can see, this little number up the top there, when I scoot across the band, it climbs up to two at about 160. Then it sort of plateaus. Oh no, it goes up to three, three and a half at 173 megahertz. So we could probably adjust that slightly with those with the Allen key and make this peak just across a little bit further. So they go 1.3 at 144.7 megahertz. Let's try the 70 centimeter band, shall we? So here's 70 centimeters and this WR is two right at the edge of the band. I'm down at 420, 430, and the SWR is 1.29. And then we climb, we're up to about two at 467. Let's move the marker across again. And at 500 megs, we're at 3.19, so it gives you an idea. And again, you could probably adjust the antenna slightly to move that bottom bit across. So let's see how well it works in practice. So I've got my old radio here on two meters, 14685. And when I key up, it doesn't key up the repeater. That's on my old antenna. Let's try the new one, the Radio Diddy one. Okay, here we are, we're on the same frequency. So I'll just key up. Oh, look at that. I can key up that repeater. The other thing I notice is the cable, it's quite flexible, which is good. Whereas this cable on this old antenna, it's, it's not flexible at all. So when you bend it, it sort of stays there, doesn't go back. It's clearly uh, a very high wire antenna in a uh, cable inside the cord, whereas this one's quite flexible, it doesn't keep its position as well and restrict you. Let's try a repeater on 70 centimeters. Okay, here's a repeater that's a fair way from me. Let's key that one up. You can see the signal strength here, it's about there. Let's try the other antenna. Okay, same repeater, I'll just key it up. Oh, look at that, quite a bit further, the signal strength. 
So quite an improvement. That's pretty good. So there we go. That's uh, a great little antenna uh, for the car, which you may want to uh, use, particularly if you're using a vehicle that you don't own or you're temporarily in and don't want to drill holes. You can get the antenna right in the center of the roof, which is great. If you plan on purchasing the antenna, I've got a link in the description. You can look at all the details uh, from there. But also, there's also another link in the description that will give you a discount. It will help me a little bit as well, but it gives you quite a discount. Unfortunately, because of the magnetic base and logistical issues, this antenna is only available in America and Europe at the moment. Hopefully that'll change soon, but that's the way it is at the moment. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. We really appreciate it. And uh, there's plenty of other videos to watch as well. Thanks again for watching. Look forward to next time. 73s from me.